minor one inch scar of where we're missing an adrenal gland. You'll notice here is my missing kidney. You'll notice my gunshot wound in the shoulder. And of course I won't take off my pants to show you the other problems. I really, really have a treat for you. Dr. Christopher Cowlin, he's been a patient of ours for around about two years now. He's the original Jason Bourne, James Bond. He has a military background. He deals with unexploded ordnance. He's been shot at, he's been tortured, he's been beaten, he's been blown up. This man was pronounced dead before he came to us. Listen to his story. Enjoy. Aloha, everybody. My name is uh, Dr. Christopher Cowlin. I'm 62 years old, and uh, I just want to note that I'm not being compensated to do this. I'm doing this because I would like to share this technology and the treatment I've received with others that may be interested. I'd like to begin with, uh, I was a military guy for 30 years in special operations bomb disposal and uh, accrued a number of injuries as well as another injuries in other government types of service. Just a few years ago, I was uh, hanging out and had a death premonition and strangely enough, went to the hospital in Bangkok and uh, died on the table, flatlined. I had sepsis uh, in one of my kidneys. It was ultimately removed. I was already missing an adrenal gland from injuries and uh, missing some of my other body parts. Uh, with numerous pieces of uh, metal in my body and uh, facial reconstruction from some previous incidents. So I wouldn't say that I was in tip-top form. I was in uh, pretty deep kimchi, as we say in the world of special operations. Uh, physically, uh, was not was not in a good spot. Before I went into the hospital, I had been diagnosed with uh, inactive thyroid, testicular dysfunction. I had no adrenal gland on one side. I had kidney challenges. My liver was a mess. I had a Kevlar stomach wall that was all put in there, a knee repair, a shoulder repair, and multiple stab wound repairs that were all in part of the line of duty. So when I flatlined, I went to a, a great local hospital in Bangkok. Bangkok's known for its medical tourism. And I was very fortunate to be in a major city where there was medical treatment. So when I arrived at the hospital, spent roughly six weeks in the ICU where they had to remove the one completely infected kidney that was damaged beyond recovery. I was left with one kidney that was functioning at approximately 28%. I had six heart attacks while I was on the table. There's a process of the sepsis, numerous issues, you know, crazy cholesterol, crazy blood sugar. So uh, it was, I was off the charts. Nobody expected me to live, including the doctors. But strangely enough, uh, I did survive. Now, fortunately, I teach at several universities, one of which is under a medical school. I'm a forensic psychologist by trade now. My students were interested in my survival. I, mean, I was pretty interested in my survival, but uh, I couldn't read. And I couldn't read because I had had so much brain damage. So I asked my students, I said, hey, find something if you can that might help this. And I'd always been interested in stem cell. I'd listened to a few podcasts about stem cells and, and I was a scientist, but I was, I was skeptical. I was not a true believer in stem cell technology. It sounded a lot like voodoo to me. I didn't understand exactly how it worked. It sounded like it could work. How would I know where to go? I didn't really understand the process well. Uh, but the good thing about being an old professor is uh, your students are generally smarter than you and they will go find the solutions for you. Now, I wasn't limited by geography. So let's be very clear. I have a home of record in Florida. I sometimes work in Europe. I sometimes work in the Middle East, sometimes work in Asia. So I'm able to travel widely. I could go anywhere in the world for stem cells. There, was, there, wasn't, a, there wasn't a limitation for doing that. And fortunately, I had a little bit of money. Uh, so I was able to, to you know, pay for that if I could find the place uh, to get it done. Well, my students checked it out. And they came back and said the Revival Clinic was the best place to go for a, a series of reasons. And, you know, the first being that they, they don't use frozen cells. And the second being that the medical director is a, a very well-known, uh, you know, physician that graduated from one of the top schools in Thailand, which is known for this area, 
went on and did further research in genomics and happens to be an expert in the field. The director of this clinic is George, and George knows the business inside and out. He's been a very successful, innovative person that came up with a protocol that makes the most sense to deliver the highest quality. What's really important in stem cells is the number of passages that each cycle makes and how many passages they have and the quality of the lab that checks those and if the stem cells are fresh. I can't give away George's secret sauce, and but I can tell you that the process that he has passed through about 15 of my graduate students that really wanted me to live because they needed to finish their dissertation and not because they liked me that much. And they went out and they found this stuff and I came to George's Revival Clinic in a wheelchair. I couldn't walk up the stairs by myself. I was still unable to read. I was having great difficulty talking and stringing together sentences. My final analysis coming out of the hospital was that I had significant brain damage and I would be unlikely to uh, be verbal again. Uh, and I went in and George gave me the stem cells. Went home, I didn't feel much except very sleepy. I slept for 24 hours and after waking up, it was an unbelievable, uh, shocking uh, change. I could immediately feel a change in my delivery. I talked to my very elderly mother on the phone who could now understand me speaking because of the stem cells and things progressively got better. I followed on with some exercise and dietary changes and took my medicine and I decided to try to get my coordination back. I eventually left the wheelchair. I practiced boxing against a bag and listening listening to uh, the, the punches get called out, which helped me a great deal and helped the stem cells. So it's, it takes a combination, you know, you've got to do something. You don't get a magic bullet and do nothing, but if you get the magic bullet and you do something, you'll get some crazy results. Then every three months, I come back to the same hospital, I get my blood work, and we measure where we were, where we are now, and where do we want to go. And it's 18 months since this has happened, I'm now able to work a full-time job that at least is 60 hours per week. I'm completely changed. I can lift weights. I can exercise. I've just written a book and published it that's, that's doing very well online. We've got a blog. We're working on a movie script. Things are going very, very well, and they're going very, very well because I've done the stem cell and I followed up with an additional stem cell. So what I want to tell you guys out of my heart is that I'm a scientist. I didn't think it was going to work. It worked. A lot of stuff was wrong with me. I don't think you could possibly have this much stuff wrong with you. This is going to help you if you want to get better, if you want to come out here. And I would strongly recommend you come to the Revival Clinic to do this because in the end, it saved my life. It made my life far better than I ever imagined it would be. George doesn't sling baloney. He doesn't exaggerate. He just shoots straight and his staff is really top notch. Now, you can try to go for the fancy guys with the frozen cells, and you can do anything you want. It's, 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 it's up to you. It's your choice. You are your locus of control in life. But if I had some physical problems and I wanted to extend my life and I wanted to feel better, I would come here. And with that, I wish you the best of luck. And feel free to look at the, look at the medical results. When you look at the numbers, if you don't believe the numbers, there's nothing I can do for you. I still wish you luck.